Hi. Good morning. It is Saturday morning for me. I have my cup of coffee. And I want to try something a little bit different. This podcast video thing, whatever you want to call this, is not going to be edited. And it is definitely not scripted. But I want to try making it. I have no plans for this. I have no idea where it's going to go. I am completely wigging it in terms of production. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, the video you're watching is literally just from my phone that I have propped up. I am wearing <laughs> headphones uh, to record the audio that way in addition to using my mic and audacity because I don't know the best way to do this. And that is part of the reason <laughs> that I am making myself do this. Um, yeah. It would be really nice. Well, I don't know if it would be nice, but I think there is a idea that if you are doing something based off of <clears throat> something other people are doing, it's derivative and it's not original and blah, blah, blah. But I am not the first person to think of doing something like this. I am sure that the people who I experienced this from are not the first people who did it, but there is a specific person who... Um, started doing something recently. It's an author who I very much respect, and I read both of her books. Her name is Kate Flanders. She wrote one book called The Year of Less that is, it's, it's about the year where she gave herself a shopping ban, where she couldn't, quote unquote, couldn't buy things. And it's about a lot more than that. Um, you know, she's sober and she talks about how impulses and ideas around consumption have changed for her and a whole bunch of stuff. And it's very good. Um, and she also wrote a book called The Advent uh, Adventures in Opting Out. And it centers around, well, she uses her own experience with deciding to opt out of working a nine to five and how she went to a freelance career and then deciding that she wanted to travel long term since she had the ability to do that. And it's kind of this, it's, it's not a how to book. It's more along the lines of a rough estimate of the things that you will experience if you choose to opt out of doing something that everyone accepts as a given. So for her, it was the nine to five, right? And maybe for other people, it's being vegetarian or vegan or I, I don't know. <laughs> I It is Saturday morning and I am in the process of drinking my first cup of coffee, so forgive me. <sighs> but she started doing this podcast by the same name, um, you know, opting out. And it's very simple. I believe on Saturday mornings <laughs> or sometime over her weekend, she goes for a hike, and hiking is very big for her. Or she goes on a walk, and she sits in nature. She chats for a little while. And then on Sunday mornings, she uploads it. There's no editing. It's not super long. Um, she records it on her phone. It's very simple. And I have found her way of doing it very soothing and very... Refreshing sounds, I don't know, 
It doesn't feel quite right, but it, it is. And I think, I know because I have experienced it, there is a pressure when you are creating something that will go on the internet no matter how many people will or won't see it for it to be perfect or for at the very least for it to be very polished and quote unquote presentable and honestly (laughs) nobody is like that image is a very small part of people and it's a very curated part of people and it's not I don't want to say it's not authentic because there are a lot of people who present these very polished images and they connect in an extremely authentic way and I I appreciate those people greatly I've just been doing a lot of thinking lately about what I want to put out into the world and into the internet (laughs) because I've been thinking a lot about um, author platforms. I am a writer, for those of you who don't know. Um, I wrote the very rough draft of my first novel earlier this year. A couple of weeks ago, I actually wrote the first draft of a second book that is about my this past year after being diagnosed with bipolar disorder and how absolutely bizarre the experience has been of just experiencing I'm turning 30 in a few weeks and I've spent the last year seeing the world in an entirely different way and it's really bizarre and it is something that I feel like people don't talk about you know the uh the time after you graduate from therapy and after you find the medications and all of these things we don't talk about um how strange it is to be in that process of growth you know we talk about the before and the after Um, But we don't talk about the process in between. So I wrote that second book. And I am currently working on rewriting and structuring uh, that book that I read earlier, or I wrote earlier this year. As well, it's it's two sequels. I'm, I'm working on that. And with all of that work, I'm having to decide what I want an author platform to be because I do intend on publishing this what do I want that interaction to look like what do I want to make my basis for connection with an audience and man that feels like a lot of pressure Um, because it is you know and yes authors platforms change over time And they evolve, and they absolutely should, because we change and evolve as people. But I've also been doing a bunch of reading about digital minimalism, and I've been changing my relationship to social media to be more intentional and to be less um, compulsive, I guess. Like, I took Facebook off of my phone, and I took Twitter off of my phone, and... Honestly, my life has not changed that much, except I reach for my phone less and I don't doom scroll. (laughs) Um, Because it's not on my phone. And doing that, I think, especially prompted my, you know, my interest in just really evaluating how I engage with people online and as a professional. And one of the things I kept thinking about is Amanda Palmer's platform. And before we go forward, I'm going to say there are a lot of things that we can criticize about Amanda Palmer. Like there's, I really enjoy a lot of her music. She has some some problematic aspects to herself but that's not that's not 
what I'm focusing on, what I'm looking at is the way that she engages with her audience. And no matter what her faults are and no matter what issues people may have with her, her entire basis is engaging with people in a very direct and raw way. Um, At least that's what it appears to me. I could be wrong. It could all be a facade. We could all have been being lied to um, since the Dresden Dolls days. I don't know. But what I see is something that is very direct and very authentic, I guess. Yeah, it's very her. And we can criticize her. But her entire platform has been based off of direct connection with her fans. And I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think like I'm, I'm probably never going to have a Patreon with like hundreds of thousands of people. I'm never going to have a Patreon with hundreds of thousands of people. I would be shocked if that happened. Um, But hopefully I will have a readership and hopefully I will have people interested in what I'm doing and how do I want to relate to those people and how do I want to connect with those people. And so I've been thinking about all of that lately. And I've been listening to Kate Flanders podcast each week. And I've been reading about digital minimalism. (laughs) And I also kept finding myself thinking about, and I don't remember who the, the artist was, but there is this, this artist I remember hearing about who he got really busy, he wasn't working, he had kids and a family and blah, blah, blah. And he was having a hard time getting into headspace to create art. And so he would sketch his coffee cup every morning because his coffee was the time that he got to himself. And it created this really, this like year long series of his coffee cup which is really interesting to look at, actually. And I thought about that and about Kate Flanders and this this idea that it doesn't have to be super produced and polished and perfect. And I was thinking about what I want my platforms to be like and what my relationship to people on the internet to be like. And the word that kept coming to mind was authentic. And then I thought of doing this and I was immediately like, oh my God, I want to do that. And then a few days later, um, especially the last few days, my anxiety kicked up massively. And this scared me. Doing this has been giving me like what I am doing right now, sitting down by myself, my My husband is at an internship on Saturday mornings. And just talking is scary. And I don't like being scared of something. I don't like being afraid of doing something that just feels like being myself. And if there is one thing that I have definitely made a point of over the last few years, it's that if I am scared of something, I have to try to do it. Now, I don't mean like, oh, I am, you know, mortally petrified of this thing. I have to do it. But like, yeah, if there's something that doesn't pose any harm to me or that I just really feel strongly about, I try to do it. And for some reason, this absolutely petrified me this week. And today, while I was making my coffee, I I was so anxious, which seems so silly. Um... 
Yeah. So I have some ideas for things I want to talk about. And I have some ideas for ways that I want to put this together and we'll see how this grows or how it changes. Um, I just like the idea of sitting down with you on Saturday mornings with a cup of coffee and just talking. Yeah. Um, I have some ideas for things that I want to talk about in the future, but today I just wanted to sit down and be like, yeah, this is, this is a thing I'm trying. And that's the thing, I want to play with social media. Like, I think, especially as people who are trying to develop, um, you know, professional platforms, we get very scared of playing with social media and playing on the internet sometimes. And play is one of the most important things to humans. Like, psychologically, we need play. And I want to play with this. I want to play with this idea and these formats and all of this stuff. And the only thing that is making me scared of it and that is stopping me from it is myself. Because what's the worst that happens? Nobody watches it. Nobody engages. Well, I guess the worst that can happen is an army of trolls appears out of nowhere and uh, attacks me and is awful. And like, we all know how the internet is, especially for women. So that is, that is the ultimate worst case scenario. But realistically, the worst case scenario is that nobody listens to this. Nobody watches these videos. And yet I will still have made something that I enjoy. And that feels like a win. I don't have anything else to talk about today. Um, so thank you for joining me for my morning coffee on this lovely Saturday morning. And hopefully I will be doing this next week. I plan on doing this next week. I liked this. This was good. I hope you have a lovely day if you're listening to this in the morning. I hope that you have had a lovely day if you're listening to this at night. And I don't have an outro. So hopefully we'll talk next time.